My brothers and sisters, we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, in Scripture today, in the Gospel, especially another parable in this stretch of summertime, ordinary time, and are continuing to grow. And the image of we stand before a God who is ever patient, and kind for us, ready to look at the weeds within our own life, and not to be too quick to pull them out too quickly, allowing us time and his patience to, to uh, turn them around into something that bears fruit. And so we begin this celebration acknowledging our sin, those weeds that are very much within our lives, asking that the Lord may transform them with his grace as we ask God for pardon and for peace. Lord Jesus, you know our thoughts before we think them. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are good and forgiving. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you do wondrous deeds. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sinfulness, and bring us one day to life everlasting. Amen. Together we pray, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity. They may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all. That you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind and you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. A responsorial song. Lord, you are good and forgiving. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O oh Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O oh Lord, to my prayer and attend to the sound of my pleading. Lord, you are good and forgiving. 
All the nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, and you do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in kindness and fidelity. Turn toward me and have pity on me. Give your strength to your servant. Lord, you are good and forgiving. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of their weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings, and the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds, saying, the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the household came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seeds in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we have a continuation of the 13th chapter in the Gospel of Matthew, where Jesus is again using parables to teach the people. Last week we heard how Jesus was sowing the seeds of the word. Today, in the parable, he's sowing the seeds of the kingdom of heaven. I'd like to concentrate on that parable about the wheat and the weeds. Jesus explains the parable where the Son of Man is the sower of good seed and the people of the world who believe in the words of Christ are those seeds. And the weeds, they are the people of this world who don't follow Christ but instead follow the evil one, the enemy, who has many names among us. Jesus is explaining the world as it exists, an intertwining of both good and evil. 
just as the wheat and the weeds were intertwined in the field. This coming together of both good and evil, that should be expected in this world as a whole and should also be expected in the church. The prophet Job wrote in the Old Testament, we accept the good things from God, should we not accept evil? The church has evolved over many centuries and will continue to exist and strive forward. And the one thing that marks its being is that intertwining of both good and evil, the mixture of both saints and sinners. We should expect it and not be surprised by it or overwhelmed by it. How would we define good if we don't know what evil is? How do we know when we're happy? Because we know when we're sad. Every day in our life, it seems, the headlines in the news involves this struggle, good versus evil. We've witnessed over the number of last months examples of events where good and evil are struggling against each other, and many innocent people have lost their lives. So who is behind all of this evil? We see both in the world and the church. Who is this sower of the bad seeds which mixes with the wheat in the field? We have to understand this enemy is real. It is a presence whose preoccupation is to sow corruption and destructive behavior within the world and within the church. I find it very interesting when working on my spiritual life and as it becomes stronger and I'm drawn closer to the Lord, I experience more temptations from that evil one. It seems like this enemy is concentrating on preventing me from becoming closer to God. This has also happened with you when you're trying to become that true disciple of Jesus. Do we have more distractions, more allurements that seem to look more inviting? We see more obstacles and engage in greater struggles. But we shouldn't be surprised. That's the enemy's job. That undermeaning, in insinuating, an attack to draw us away from Christ. When we look back at the parable, the slaves asked the master, should we pull the weeds? His answer is no. If you pull the weeds, you could uproot some of the wheat, damaging the good. Good rarely exists simply by itself. And on that same hand, evil, that rarely exists simply itself. Rather, it exists together with the good, both in society, politics, personal relationships, and in our hearts. That's where good and evil are intermingled. Good and evil are sometimes tightly wrapped around each other, which can make it difficult to eliminate that evil. We know many of the evils of this world. We'd love to go out with both hands and rip them up like the weeds of a garden. But how much good will we disturb in the process? I'm not saying that we shouldn't fight. Fight against all evil in every way we can. We just need to be very careful on how we attack it. There are certain goods that cannot exist without certain evils. A real good example in the church is that martyrs could never have existed without the tyrants that executed them for their beliefs. So we have that good and evil in this world. In the parable, the master tells the slaves to let the weeds and, and the weeds and the wheat grow together until harvest, where both will be collected. The weeds will be burned and the wheat put into the master's barn. God, in his mysterious way, does let evil exist throughout this world. If he wanted to, yes, he could eliminate it in an instant. 
but good and evil will remain being interwined and God has given us the gift of free will, that gift to make choices, to follow the path of good or to be led down that path of evil. We know the year, the date, or the time is not known when this world is going to cease to exist. The time when the wheat and the weeds will be separated. Where will we be? On that path to our Lord Jesus? Or will we be lost in the path led by our enemy? Will we hear the words that are from our Lord as we enter that heavenly gate? Well done, my faithful servant. Come and enter into my Father's house. My brothers and sisters, let us stand to make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made. And for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. Brothers and sisters, called to be a people of faith, hope, and love, we turn to the Father of love with our prayers this day. For the church, that we may allow the good seed of the gospel to take root within us and bring forth a harvest of virtue and manifestations of the reign of God, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For an openness of mind and heart, that the parables of Jesus may help us recognize the limits of our vision and understand and understanding and move us toward examining our life and actions from a new perspective, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For patience, that we may not judge one another, but rather be open to the work of God in doing, with it, doing within each of us that will be revealed in God's time, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing and transformation of our weaknesses, that the Spirit of God will work within us to bring us to wholeness in the areas in which we are most wounded and vulnerable, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us, that we may be leavened of compassion and justice in our society so that the weeds of racism and oppression may be stifled, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are unemployed, that God will give them the courage as they search openness to new possibilities and confidence in applying for positions, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the living, 
and for those whom we mourn, especially Royce and Jerry Coppins, that they are forever in the warmth of the light of Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those prayers in the Book of Intercessions, and for those within the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all goodness, grant us your mercy and your forgiveness to stay as we place our prayer and need in your hands. May our faith be strong as you continue to guide us to the ways of everlasting life. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For the divine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours now become acceptable to God the Almighty. O God, who with the perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, the sacrifice from your faithful servants. Make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. You laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing in times of seasons. You formed man in your own image and set us over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name or all you have made and forever to praise you and your mighty works through Christ our Lord. With the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord, a God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat of this bread and drink this cup, Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. Brothers and sisters, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Together we pray, Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
And friends, let us together offer our prayer with St. Joseph. Good St. Joseph, as you led the Holy Family, watch over our families, help our family and all families to know and to share God's love. In our family relationships, may we find healing and seek to be holy. May our fathers help us to become faithful disciples of Jesus who share our love for him. As foster father of Jesus, watch over all who serve as spiritual fathers. In a special way, bless our Holy Father, our bishops, and our priests. May they follow your humble example and their fatherly care for the people of God, the church. With Mary, you raise Jesus, the high priest. You know our need for priests. Please raise up good and holy priests from our families to serve the people of our diocese. May our children and grandchildren hear and say yes to the call of Jesus, just as you and Mary did. Good Saint Joseph, pray for us. Amen. And friends, let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming on this balmy afternoon, friends. I hope you stay well and stay cool. Um, if a few of you might hang around after Mass to wipe things down for tomorrow morning, that would be appreciated. Stay well. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in his goodness, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.